At the dawn of recorded history, and likely some time before, humans have ventured back into the sea, compelled by the vast mystery of secrets that lie in the alien world below. And so our story of swimming underwater begins, as many stories of human civilization do, in Mesopotamia. The Epic of Gilgamesh, written around 2700 BCE, is considered by many to include the first account of a person holding their breath while using stones to sink to the bottom of a body of water, much like we do today with weights of lead. As you might imagine, this presented some problems. Leaving yourself enough time for a lengthy ascent was key, and thus the ability in general to remain underwater at length would become an important human desire, to fish and to explore the world around. Around 500 BCE, the Greek Skylus came up with an ingenious method of breathing through a reed while hiding himself underwater in a narrow overboard escape from the Persian king Xerxes. In a show of inspiration soon thereafter, humans began using what we now call diving bells. Aristotle wrote of his student Alexander the Great's exploits underwater during the Siege of Tyre, the first known example of a diving bell called the Kalympha. The pressure of the water kept the air trapped inside, while becoming negatively buoyant, causing Alex to sink to the bottom of a body of water with a full cavity of air. The hunt for pearls and sponges could now intensify. For most of human history, retrieving sponges or pearls from oysters required divers to descend 100 feet down on a single breath, and the bells took them further. There was rarely a jewel more precious for a queen than a big old honking pearl. The biggest. And then the Dark Ages happened and most people were too busy dying from the plague. Leonardo da Vinci was in on the game, drew up plans for an underwater breathing apparatus utilising an umbilical attached to a float kept above water, sort of a long-range snorkel, and over the next several hundred years, humans' ability to remain underwater would develop quickly. With the onset of the Industrial Revolution, pearls were a pleasure of the past, while moving earth and building bridges became the driving force of innovative underwater technology, leading right into decompression sickness, first reported in 1842. Decompression sickness, or the bends as it's now known, affected many divers for years to come and is caused by a reduction in ambient pressure which results in the formation of bubbles of inert gases within tissues of the body. Thus divers must limit their ascent rate to about 10 meters per minute and carry out a decompression schedule as necessary until sufficient gas has been eliminated from the body to allow further ascent. Eventually, decompression tables were a must to aid divers in calculating how deep they can go, for how long, how to get back up, and how to mix their air. Can't argue that math class was needed now, can ya? That was before computer watches and underwater flashlights. Salvador Dali once showed up to lecture in a diving bell and insisted on speaking from inside of it. In 1939, under secret US government contract, Christian J. Lambertson invented the first device to become known as the self-contained breathing apparatus, or SCUBA, for covert frogman missions during World War II. In 43, Jacques Cousteau created an open-circuit diving set with demand regulator called the Aqualung, which became one of the most popular scuba devices of all time. In the mid-50s, Frenchman Georges Burchat introduced the first isothermic wetsuit made from materials resistant to temperature change. Although the wearer gets wet, they're not as likely to get as cold as with suits made from other materials. We've got the air, got the suits, monitors, maps, tables. What can't we do? The current world record for deepest scuba dive is just 330 meters, yet the deepest point in the ocean, 11,000 meters. Aside from decompression issues, temperatures are difficult to overcome. Nitrogen narcosis, or the narcs, leads to numbness and memory impairment. Let's just say it's a lot of pressure. Even with submarines, the majority of the world's oceans are unexplored, and marine biologists estimate we've only identified 10% of all the species in the ocean. I wonder what all is out there.